Hello, this is Curtis Harris, and we're back again for another quick video to help you solve a problem that I encounter quite a bit in the workplace. As a data person, you've likely been asked to just show me the number. What's the number? I don't need any charts. I don't need any graphs. I don't need a dashboard. I just need to know the number so I can move on with my day. I can see you nodding in your chair right now that this has happened to you before, just like everyone else. So what we're here today to talk about are some strategies to make that number better. In the scenario where you can't ease this stakeholder into a visualization, into a dashboard, they really do just want the number, we can make that number better, we can extend it, and we can make it more impactful. And that's what we're gonna talk about today and I'm going to show you how I deal with this problem. All right, so how do we deal with this problem of needing just the number? There are certain times where you're just not going to get your stakeholder to budge, and you're going to have to provide what they want. And if that is the number, then you're going to need to do that and move on to different projects. And normally when I'm showing the number, it's in relation to a certain period of time. Whether it's a month, a quarter, a year, I'm usually showing what is the current number. And how I like to extend that number is to actually just dynamically look at the previous period, whether that be the previous year, the previous month, or the previous quarter. And this is really easy to set up in Tableau. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with minimal pain. It'll be very scalable, and it'll just refresh every time the data comes in and you won't have to deal with it anymore. So let's set that up right now. So if we're looking at sales in Tableau, uh, we can start to build this out. So let's take sum of sales to our text shelf. Uh, the stakeholder wants the number, so we're going to put it on text, and we're just going to have a simple text statement uh, for our KPI. We can take order date, and let's assume for this case that it's a month. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a calculated field um, that is the month of the order date. And I like to do the date trunk of a date field because that takes away the date hierarchy when I use exact date. I'm converting the order date specifically to a month. So if we were talking about um, January 7th, 2018, this field would become January 1st, 2018. And if you use exact date, it can be nothing else besides January 1st, 2018. So you don't get that little plus minus hierarchy button there on your screen. You don't have users clicking things that you didn't want them to click. So that's why I do this usually. So if I hit OK, we'll get a new field called order, order month. I'm going to change the data type to date because Tableau assumes I want date time when I'm working with a date calculation. Let's go ahead and drag this up to columns. I'm going to say discrete, and I want the exact date. So these will just be months. And the first thing I want to do is actually reverse the sorting on this. Tableau knows that we want to read this left to right, uh, which is a typical fashion for, say, a line graph or a bar graph. We want to see it progress to the current. But for this setup, we actually want to flip that and look at the most recent period first. So if we just change the sort on our dimension on columns to descending, we'll get 12 1 2018 first. And as you bring in new data, as the calendar flips to 1 1 2019 as the order month, that will become first in line. And from here, all we need to do is create a calculated field um, to get the index and filter on that. So if we create a calculated field that's simply the index, change it to discrete, and drag that to filters. And we just want to select one and two. And what that does is actually just give us the most recent two periods, no matter what they may be. The index table calculation is looking at table across. So it's going from left to right and giving you that number, one, two, three, to however many periods there were in your view. And by saying, give me one and two, it will always grab the first and second period based on the sorting you have. So this is why we want to set up from, uh, we, this is why we want to change the sort to descending. 
Okay, so this is good. We have the number, uh, which is $83,829. But if we have the prior period in the view, we can actually give that number a lot more context. So 83,829 compared to what? And we can build out these comparisons pretty easy. So what I wanna do is actually just start making some table calculations. We're gonna write very little cal actual calculations and we're gonna leverage Tableau to do that work for us. So if we hit the drop down for sum of sales and go to quick table calculation, and let's just get a couple of those differences. Um, so if we select percent difference, we can give our stakeholder, how has that number changed from period to period? We can take that $83,000 and see the percent difference it is to the $118,000 in the previous month. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna go the wrong way. Um, and this is just how it's dealing with sorting. So we actually just wanna go in here and say relative to next. And that's gonna look from left to right, the next one, not the previous one. So we're down 29% compared to 11 one, 2018. And let me bump this up um, and change the, the font for us so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And the nice thing about this methodology is these table calculations are actually calculating before the filter is happening. So you can see that 11 one 2018 is actually getting a value as well when we're filtered to index of one and two. So the order of operations is letting those table calculations calculate and then filtering out based on index, which is actually opens up a lot more possibilities that we're not gonna discuss, um, but it does make uh, something pretty handy and I'll show you that in a little bit here. Okay, so now we have the percent difference in sales. Um, from here I'm just going to drag my sales back to the view because I do want that number. Uh, so we have $83,829 is the number. It's down 29% from the previous period. We could also give them the absolute difference. So if we did the same thing, quick table calculation, and just did the difference, and again went back relative to next, we can get the dollar value as well. Um, a lot of times you'll show down 29%, and then your stakeholder will say, well, how much is that? So let's, let's go ahead and give them that. So again, bring sales back up into the view. So we have $83,829, which is down $34,000 from the prior period, and that is about 29%. So this is great. We have three additional or two additional metrics to show our user who just wanted the number. And now it's really all about text. We want to spell this out for people. We don't want them to assume what these numbers mean. Uh, we're going to give them that context. So from here, really all we need to do is just draw up some, some information in our label. So I'm going to left align these. And we're just going to type some things out. Uh, we don't need to really do anything um, fancy. We're just going to actually type it right in and hard code it. So we can say, let's actually go out of here and grab our order month and put that on our text as well. So let's grab this here and say order month sales. So you can see our label starting to form here. So we have 12 1 2018 sales. Let's actually change that so it makes a little more sense. 12 1 might be confusing. So if we went in the format and changed the pane formatting on the date to be something more relative to the month itself. So let's do that. December 2018 sales. That's not all caps, so we'll just do it this way. We're going to give the user the number, the ever important number. And for me, what I like to do is probably make this stand out a little bit more than the rest of the numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and bold it and make it a little bit bigger. So we have December 2018 sales, 83,829. 
we're done. And we're also giving the user those extra bits of information that they're bound to ask at some point. So let's go ahead and change these to be de-emphasized. Our user did ask for the number. So let's go ahead and make that the focal point. And now we can say things um, We can add some text to our visualization here that helps explain what's going on with the number. So now we can put those on the same line. I'm just going to throw the percentage change in a parentheses and italicize it. That's typically how you might see this. So we're down X dollars, which is this percentage. Okay, so now we're essentially done. We gave our user the number, 83,829. We gave them some extra context. How much is that up or down from the prior month? And we also gave them that percentage change, if that's the more important way for them to look at it. And as new periods come in, our first view here will be the most recent period. And at this point, since we don't need to know what's going on in November, we just had that there for context for our sake. We can actually just filter this out to just index of one. Since we know that the table calculations are happening before the index filter, this is going to be just fine. Nothing will change when we hit apply. So we have index of one. We can hide our field labels. We can hide our headers. And in all likelihood, we can turn off our tooltips because all of the information in the view is right here. And this is a simple template for you to build out um, multiple cards like this. Maybe you have a different measure, maybe it's profit, maybe your dashboard or stakeholder has three metrics that they wanted to see just the number. And maybe this leads them to thinking that you could show them a little bit more than just the number. So all in all, this is how I built KPIs at my day job. Um, and this is just a super easy, super scalable way with no calculations almost whatsoever, except for the order month, when in all likelihood, you probably have the right date period in your own data. And we're just leveraging built-in features that Tableau has. We don't have to hard code date calculations to find the values from the previous months. We don't have to do lookups uh, we don't have to do anything. We're just clicking the buttons that Tableau has provided us and building a nice scalable process to display a KPI. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you some strategies that you can take back to your work when dealing with the number. And I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye.